especially uh, not so much now, although certainly homophobia is with us. It was certainly, oh, imagine the 50s discovering you're gay. Uh, a lot of people got married to prove that they weren't, uh, including your husband. Is that so, Fran Rothenhausen? Yeah, that's right. He didn't, he didn't get married to prove he wasn't gay. He got married because he didn't want to be gay and he wanted to be married. And he... He wanted a married life. Yeah, what year were you married? Just 1965. And, um... You, uh, he had told you, did he not, that he had had one homosexual experience? As a teenager. And he felt that he had worked it out in therapy. That was a time when that's what it was thought of as a neurosis and something that you could work through. Your son of that marriage is now 16 years old. That's correct. You were married for 12 years. Correct. Did he finally sit down? You, you uh, as you look back on it, you say there was a lot of evidence that he was gay that you didn't notice. I mean, that you weren't, uh, what, uh, accepting at the time. There were clues that I could have picked up on in retrospect. Like? Like he, the way he looked when he went out at times that he didn't go out with me. When he went out by himself and what he wore and... Things like that, little things. Yeah. Well, what did you do? Sit down one day, and I assume that uh, I assume that your marriage was not necessarily uh, I had the a marriage of the year. Phil, I had a lovely marriage. Really? We had a, a warm, loving relationship, and that included a good sex life. After 12 years of marriage, Ray told me that there was something that he had been hiding for a long time, that he couldn't deal with it anymore, that it was about to burst, and if he wasn't himself. He just couldn't go on living, and that was that he was gay, that this was his real orientation, that he loved me, that he loved Mark, but that he needed to be himself. And you cried. Yeah, I sure did. I cried and I screamed and I was devastated. I loved my husband and I wanted to be married. Did he move out of the house? Yeah. How After was... four months. We tried living together for four months. After, uh, with it. how old was your son at this time? He was about eight. And you didn't tell him? Not immediately. Now your husband moves out of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, are you communicating with him at this time? Does he call or what? He died in October. He died of AIDS. You should also know that Mrs. Uh, Rothhausen's husband, legally ex-husband, uh, while he was dying, you welcomed him home. You welcomed him home with his lover. You nursed him as far as you could, and then you accompanied him to the hospital, and you were with him to the end. That is a remarkable love story. It wasn't remarkable, Phil. That's what you do when you love someone. And in spite of the fact of being divorced, we cared about each other. You were high school buddies, weren't you? Yeah. So all, you, you really were the girl next door for him then, weren't you? Yeah, we grew up in the same little town and we cared about each other. Our parents were friends. Yeah. Uh, how, how did your son, 16, deal with this drama? My, this audience has got to be a little curious about a young man dealing Mark with... Mark loved his father very dearly. That he was gay was just another fact about him like the color of his eyes or the color of his hair. And as far as how he dealt with AIDS and death, it's, it's devastating, it's terrible. Now, uh, your husband's memory is a fond one for you. Uh, yeah. You had some unusual pain in your marriage, but you know, what marriage doesn't have some pain? Um, nevertheless, I assume you feel Gay people, it's hard to pass laws here, we don't mean to, but it's better if gay people don't get married, isn't it? No. You can't say that either. No, I, I have to say that pain would have been avoided, but I also have to say that I had a beautiful marriage and the experience was a good one for me, that my son could not have had a better father, and that we've learned from it. Were you angry at yourself that you allowed this to happen, or was it... I was angry at him. I was angry at myself. I was angry after a while at society for making him hide who he was. You must be very intolerant of fag jokes, and... Uh... You betcha. <laughs> Sandy Milne is uh, next to you, Mrs. Rothenhausen. Uh, his nine-year marriage ended because he is a homosexual. You were raised in Canada. 
You were a Mennonite? Uh? Yeah, I was raised in basically a Mennonite community uh, and um, assumed from as long as I could remember that I was one day going to get married and have a family and a house and a dog and a child at least. <laughs> uh, at the same time, I uh, never remember in my whole life being physically attracted to the opposite sex. I knew from as early as I can recall that uh, I was physically attracted to uh, other boys as a child. Um, but it, uh, it surprises me now how naive I could be. <laughs> uh, and uh, there just didn't seem to be uh, any label for what I was feeling. I, I felt I was different from everybody else I knew and that it was something that I couldn't possibly share, certainly not with my mother or father. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, my childhood was very lonely. Um, and uh, I learned to be a very good actor <laughs> yeah. and to do what I thought other people wanted me to do. So you uh, met and married at the age of, you met your... Uh, I believe I was 24. I married in 1970. I told you how old I am. You have a son, 12 years old. Right. Uh, what was the occasion of your coming out of the closet? Let's say first to your own spouse. Um, I think it, it was, a, in terms of my coming out to myself first, uh, it was a gradual experience of... of of beginning to allow myself to recognize what I was, had been feeling all my life. Um, as Fran said, the marriage that my wife and I had was a very good marriage. And uh, we both, I, I certainly love my wife. But after a certain point, uh, I became more and more frustrated. Uh, I mean, I had certainly thought that when I got married, things would get better and, and uh, in terms of my impulses, but it, that wasn't true, quite the contrary. With not much time, what what uh, provoked the divorce or the separation? Did you sit down in the, the uh, kitchen table and say, I'm gay, or what? I went into therapy and, and spent a, a couple of months with a the therapist and then asked my wife to join me. And it was at that point that she got upset and wanted to know why, and I told her. And uh, basically, uh, we separated probably about a month after that. Uh, it was. At the same time, I told my son, who at that time was four years old, that, um, that basically I needed to love another man. And, um, you told him at and age I wanted four to be with another man. Right. This audience is gasping at that. That at doesn't that, mean you're point, wrong. You understand at that there point, was... Yeah. At that point, he uh, certainly knew what love was about. <laughs> and I, I was very concerned that uh, on the separation, which of course was difficult for him, as well as the, the, the others involved, that he not blame himself for his mother and father separating. Right. And so I wanted to be as honest with him as I could be. Uh, I don't think at that age, uh, the uh, telling him that I was attracted to other men in any way was a negative for him. You know, the thing he struggled with was the separation. You, you he was very glad to know that I had someone to love me, right. and he wanted someone to love his mother and him too. Do you retain a relationship with your ex-wife? Uh, we, we've maintained a relationship in the sense that we share custody of my son and, and we certainly talk to each other about uh, arrangements for my son and, and his life. You think your son is healthier at age 12 now because of his father's honesty and coming out of the closet? Because he what? Isn't quite so narrowly entrapped by society's expectations of male roles? Well, I, I, think, I think the fact that, that he has a, a gay father has complicated his life and will continue to do so. I, I, my prayer is that uh, that complication will make him stronger and more tolerant and, and also help him to understand that he has to be who he is right. Right. and okay. that he doesn't have to uh, be like everyone else because that's we the, are different. That's the lesson for our children. The lesson is be who you are. Be proud of who you are. Don't hide anything. Uh, uh, do you have a relationship, uh, Sandy? Yes, I, I have a lover. Of we just celebrated our fourth anniversary in February. And he's met your son? Oh, yes. And My you're son comfortable? spends a lot of time with us. He does. We live together. It's perfectly okay. We have a family. That's <laughs> uh, very important. I, I mean, the, my Erwin, my, my lover, uh, plays a role for my son that is very uh, protective and, 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 and uh, lets him yeah. know that there's another adult yeah. person in this world who loves him and cares for him and is there for him when he needs him. Joyce Hunter left her marriage after 13 years because she is gay. You have two children, Ms. Hunter, 24 and 26, and you're a grandmother. Yes. 
Um, what, uh, did you sit down with your husband? I mean, this has got to be the biggest shocker, uh, you know what I mean? If a, pr if, did your husband wonder why he chose you? Do they go through that? How did... uh, it's very interesting because my husband said to me when I told him that I was gay that he always knew there was something different about me. And I know he said it in a joking way and he said to me, I thought I could change you. And, uh, but we were also very good friends before we got married. And uh, I got married knowing I was a lesbian, like uh, Sandy, uh, because I thought that it would go away. I was told it would go away. I was 18 years old, it was 1958, and that was what you did. You got married and there was pressure to be married. Even if it was, you know, covert pressure, that was there to be, you had to be married. And I've known him gay since I was 10 years old. And I spent almost all my life hiding. And the way to do it for me at that time was to get married and be like everybody else, because I was afraid that I would be rejected by my friends and uh, yeah. my family. Do you still see your ex-husband? I speak to him on the phone now and then. <clears throat> Our kids are grown now. Yeah. Um, Francis Jimbroni is a psychotherapist who counsels married gay men and women. He left his own marriage after seven years because you are gay. Um, are you, do you think there are gay teenagers who make girls pregnant to prove they aren't? Is that possible? To prove they aren't gay? Yeah. That's really difficult to say. I well, can imagine. Well, I could respond to that. Maybe it was you that I saw in the notes. Yeah. Um, I work for the Institute for the Protection of Lesbian and Gay Youth, and I'm a social worker and program director there. And pregnancy is an issue for lesbian and gay teenagers. There are many pregnant lesbians, and there are young, many young men who are getting girls pregnant so that no one will suspect that they are gay. As one young man says, you know, I got that machismo, I got, one, got a girl uh, pregnant, and nobody is going to suspect because, and he said, the, and I'll tell you something, parents will be, can deal with the pregnancy better than they can deal with the homosexuality. Yeah. Yeah. But what's, what's interesting here is the thunder on the religious right is one of the main reasons for the fear of coming out and the temptation to try and live a lie, which can ruin the lives of uh, either spouse. That's right. And I think that you have to understand why these kids are doing it. They are so afraid that somebody is going to find out that they're gay. Many of these kids get thrown out of their homes, uh, or sometimes they are physically and emotionally abused at home. And it's, it's, it's a horrendous thing, and they're going to try to do everything they can to hide. And that is, the, the easiest way is to get yourself a girlfriend or a boyfriend on the side. Right. So that you can keep up your front. But there is such discrimination and bigotry in this society that you have to understand that us getting married is the epitome of our oppression. And, and this, the internalized homophobia, which... This How do you mean the mentioned. epitome of your oppression? You mean... A to get... You, well, to hide. We had to... I mean, when we're, we're and you're so involving a, you're involving another person innocently, and not it isn't to say that you're guilty. It is rather to say, without information, another person is being swept into this drama. Yeah. Let me just say something. I went into that marriage really believing that it would work. I went into it honestly. I'm going to change, and I believed when I got married that it would last the rest of my life, and that I would be strong enough to change because that was what I was told by a therapist. This is 1958. This is 1958. And it just could not, I couldn't do it. I mean, I was trying to be something that I wasn't. And society is to blame, and I really don't feel any guilt. You wanted to I, add. I think what Joyce is saying is correct, but there's also many, many gay people who get married very consciously, not to hide because they're in love. They want a family, and they marry women who are willing to marry them, even though they know they're gay. How do you feel about that? This is America. They ought to be able to? Certainly, why not? How about, uh, it's an option the society doesn't allow. Don't you feel there's a certain moral obligation to apprise your spouse of your own sexual status no, prior to the... I don't think you heard me. There are many men who marry telling their wives they're gay. Oh, I see. And their wives accept that and... Yeah. You don't endorse a covert kind of... Uh, if you're not sure, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's not a question for love endorsing. The issue here is, is the kinds of pressure that force men and yeah. women to marry yeah. in a society that does not permit them to yeah. permit them this option. Are you there? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Hello? Go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm gay, and uh, I'm calling long distance. I just wanted to say that my, um, I'd like to address the lady who lost her husband. And uh, it takes a special kind of a lady to do what she did, and she has touched my heart. 
I don't have a lot of time, sir. You had a question. Well, not really a question other than to say that we need more women like her. I basically... Thank you. Hi, I'm glad you waited. Uh, I have several friends who were married because of the ignorance and pressures to be so-called normal uh, in the 50s and 60s. I'm particularly concerned about a male friend who is in a long-term relationship with someone, and uh, they live apart, though. They don't, they don't share the same apartment. Uh, he has a 10-year-old son <clears throat> who has as yet not been told. Uh, he sees his son every other week uh, or every other weekend. He takes his son on vacations with him, yes, whatever. But there is no... When, when, how can he... He's afraid to tell him. But I fear, I fear for this child who has to have some intelligence and some Bill, awareness. Can I, yes. to that, I got some uh, free because, advice for you. God, we were in this situation. When, when Ray told me that he was gay when we separated, uh, I was very reluctant to tell my son Mark. I thought the kid's preteen, he's going to go through all kinds of identity, terrible traumas himself because of this. Let's not tell him. Well, the kid went through an awful lot of fear and anxiety because he felt that something was being held back, and it sure was. Once he knew, he was relaxed. He got over the feeling yeah. of helplessness. I, we are projecting our own anxiety angry. on the child, yeah. I guess. Is that it? I mean, uh, well, that, that they, that they're sensitive people, and they can pick up things. I've Kids, seen many, many, many people over the last eight years that I've worked with, fathers coming out to their sons or daughters, with very positive experiences. I mean, at first the child is shocked, and it's a transition, it's an experience they have to yes. relate to. And my kids, when I told them, my, my son was 10 and my daughter was 12, going on 13. And uh, their reaction at first was, so what? And, you know, and I talked to them for about an hour and it was like they were ready to, to, to get out. Because let me tell you something, while we think it's easy for young people to process it, it takes time for them to hear what you told them. I heard, I heard oh, some people... Yes, one second, okay. if you will. It seems that the panel feels very comfortable being in this situation. I disagree with this totally. You don't want them to be comfortable. No, <laughs> I think... You I, want them to be uncomfortable? Well, no, I don't want them as persons to be uncomfortable, but they um, are dealing with an uncomfortable thing I, that I don't feel is what uh, should, correct. What should they do? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Uh, they love their children. They even love their ex-spouses. My daughter is watching this show today, and she loves me, and I know that. So what, what troubles you if that's the truth? I just feel that this isn't right, that uh, I'm glad you love your maid and your children love you. I think love is fine. I just, I personally... I understand. Uh, you want us to be suffering. <laughs> no, no, I don't want you to suffer. I think it's admirable that you took in your husband that was dying of AIDS, but you probably would have taken him in if he was dying of cancer or any of us would. Yes, certainly, but do you know, do you know the attitude that, well, it's wrong and you shouldn't be comfortable with it because it's a bad thing. It's that very attitude and the jokes around it and everything else around it that makes the children who are gay and after all, one out of ten people is gay, including children, that makes them uncomfortable, that makes them hide, that makes them deceive and later on. And they make them marry your daughter. And we talk right. about child abuse. I don't think there's any child abuse that's more painful than the abuse of parents that tell their children they can't talk about how they feel. It's fine with me for you to have that attitude but don't instill that attitude on me. And I feel like through media or whatever... We shouldn't have these kinds of programs on television. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it just seems like now that, um, to me, this is wrong. I feel that there's something wrong in your genetic makeup or whatever. But due to uh, oh, media can I say coverage... Something? Hang on, just, media coverage what? Is uh, <clears throat> making society... Making it feel like it's good and before you know okay. it... We're going to accept this. So now, what will what happen then? There might be more gay people now, because it's not so hard to be gay. Right. Someone that might not even want to be gay or might not decide they'll try it. True. Yeah. Okay. Hang on just a moment, please. <coughs> yes, ma'am. These people apparently were very lucky. Their children seemed to say, "Okay, I accept this." What would their course of action have been if their kids would have? been so shocked and said, Dad, I can't accept you this way. Mom, I can't accept you this way. If you're going to go 
we're not going to see each other anymore. What and that happens. And that does happen. That does happen. But yes, let me sir. tell you something. The attitude to the public and, and, and people like who just spoke before you give our kids a message that it's not okay for our parents to be who they are. And those attitudes, you know, are helping our kids to, uh, to sort of not feel good about who their parents are. Over here, please. I want to know if you left your uh, spouse for one person, you know, or did you just, I mean, I guess your case you did, you said you've been with your you mate. Rather than being uh, for a promiscuous life? Yeah. For promiscuous. You left uh, your spouse for a... See, no, no, wait, that wait, question wait. has behind I, it I, the assumption that homosexuality is a sexual experience. That all, that the only thing involved in homosexuality is sex. And there's a lot more, just like there is in heterosexuality. There's when love, I, affection, the need to, right. to be intimate. When yeah. I left, when I told my kids that I was gay, I was not in a relationship and did not get into a relationship until two years later. I was telling them that I was a gay person and this is who I was and I couldn't pretend anymore. Are you there? I'm glad you waited. Yes, thank you very much. When my twins were 11 and my other children were 14 and 17, I have four children, my husband came out of the closet. It was 20 years of, after we had married. And he threatened not to support me if uh, he had to leave. So I left him. Now, what I was wondering of the first speaker, Miss Rothenhausen, how did she get her husband to leave? And why didn't she leave? I struggled, I struggled for six years trying to survive after leaving my husband because I was angry. I worked in a psych unit yeah. with AIDS patients. Wait a minute. When you left, did you take the kids with you? No. I went to National Organization for Women, and I went to work in psychiatry with AIDS patients. Really? Now, uh, but uh, is your husband survives? Your husband's... He's a school teacher. And d are the children living with him? Yes, they are. Uh-huh. He's a good mother. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> he is troubled, and I've taken him literature that age. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't you feel... Do you see your kids? Yes, uh, weekly. I call them almost daily, and I've always <laughs> lived close by. But you're, you have, what is your feeling about your husband, your ex-husband? I sit down and have coffee with him, and we talk about raising the children, and I'm compassionate, but I'm still angry because he's not supporting me, and I'm also at this point of being disabled. I have a, a sprain from right. uh, doing, I worked in child abuse. I understand. And do, forced to care. Right. How, uh, do you feel you have a prejudice toward gay people? Uh, not toward other people, but toward my husband, yes. <laughs> You like you love all gay people except your ex-husband. I have a gay neighbor who I'm compassionate toward, but I'm also in AA today, and I feel that these people have an addiction. The have gay what? people have an addiction. I believe they have an addiction. Sexual addiction to addiction. what? An addiction to what? To sex. Se <laughs> See? That's why we have always get down to that. Okay, no, I'll give you a chance to speak to this. You'll have to forgive me for this interruption. I know that I appreciate very much the is a, is an important qu question you've asked, and I will get some uh, commentary on it. Can you s forgive me for this brief interruption, and um, we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm glad you're there. Go ahead. Uh, yes. I realize that you made the point about this being a problem in the 50s. Um, I'm a 21-year-old, and I've been married since June, and I do not think it is a problem of the 50s. I think it's a problem of the 80s, and I don't know how to tell my wife. Um, she does not know that I'm gay. Is there any way that one of you on the panel can help me and tell me how I can approach my wife with the problem? You've been married for a year, you say? I've been married since June, June of 85. I, I really... That's a familiar story. I can empathize it very much. I see hundreds of men with the same story. The first suggestion I have is get some help. Go talk to someone before you do it. Someone you can work it out with before you actually come out to your wife, like a professional or a pastoral counsel counselor or another therapist. But it's yeah. what I'm afraid Okay. It's what I'm afraid of is it's going to devastate my, my family. I come from the South. I'm not from New York. I'm from, from Virginia. And I think it's, I've come from a well-to-do Southern family. I'm afraid it's going to devastate my whole family structure. Yeah, just, uh... That's why you need to think about it very carefully and prepare for it. Yeah, 
Did you know you were gay when you got married? Uh, yes, I did. And you got married because? Based, I'm, I'm ashamed, but I got married because that was the thing to do. And I got married in Virginia, and I, you know, I knew no gay men really in Virginia, except at college. And right. I had to get married. Right. Um, I'm a member of the Gay Fathers Forum here in, in Manhattan, and uh, that's one op option for, for married gay people in, uh, in this area to attend a, situ a, a meetings where they can meet other people in similar situations and find out they're not alone and talk about how they feel. Do you think your wife suspects at all? Um, yes, I think she does. Um, but she, she's good enough not to say anything to me. Um, uh, yeah, I... Uh, this, it doesn't mean that they have no sex life. But no, it, I know. No, that's not true at all. We have an, a normal sex life. It's just that, that I, you know, I, I prefer to, to be with, with the guy friends that I have. And, you know, my wife is still, I still love her very much. It's not that we have abnormal anything. It's just I need to tell her and I don't know how. I, I, my experience at the forum is this, that a large percentage of, of the married men who come to the Gay Fathers Forum are still with their wives, and many of them are very open with their wives about their sexual orientation. For some couples, this seems to work. Yeah. It uh, works for many couples, yeah. and you don't automatically assume that your wife will leave you because you're gay. That, yeah. that my experience yeah. is that that happens less and less right. in my, uh, my practice. Right. And you, if she does you... leave you, it doesn't mean that life is over. Yeah. Are you worried about AIDS? Am I, yes, yes, very much so. Um, I've, we've, I've cut down on my contact um, immensely in the last two and a half years. I don't, um, I can't go into it, obviously, but I do not, we do not experience what we did in my college years, if you know what I mean. I mean, the things have cut down quite a bit. I just enjoy really the companionship now, but the, the sex life has really toned down quite a bit. Hang on a minute. Phil, it seems like we really haven't advanced much at all since the 50s. With all of the media coverage and all of the writings and everything, I yeah. think that I've advanced personally a lot in my attitude toward yeah. gays. But the church hasn't. And in fact, if anything, the church is uh, not only Catholic church, but organized religion itself. <clears throat> Boy, the, <clears throat> the gay rights bill here in New York is being clobbered by um, Well, we got the bill out of committee. Huh? We got the bill out of committee, and we yeah. do expect the bill to pass uh, on, on the 20th. We don't think that's a good idea. Huh? Also, also, I would Who say that all, all churches... You don't think so, huh? <laughs> Phil? Well, why don't you tell the citizen here? The man is queer. That's the answer to, the, to this. The man is queer. I, I that have solves the real problem. problems with you bringing this subject up to a four-year-old child. That's where my... That's where my problem the lies. Subject, how, old, really how old should the child be, do you think? The subject he brought up adult, to his child was In an loud. adult environment, I would think. Exactly. Ex expose him to I heard a lot of people on. gasp but at, the, at my telling a four, my four-year-old son that I needed to love another mm -hmm. man. I'm glad I did it when he was four years old because he was not shocked at that point. If I had waited, if I had waited until he was a teenager, when he had all kinds of peer pressure on him to conform, it would have been much more difficult for him. Now, I think it's an individual choice that needs to be made, but uh, I'm very glad that it happened with us when he was at an age where he didn't have the kinds of social pressures on him that, that a homophobic society produces for a teenager. Over here, sir. I wondered if any of your children are gay. My son is very much interested in... in young ladies at this point. So I, I, I certainly believe and, and, and pray, as I said before, that, that he knows he can be himself, but all indications are that he's very heterosexual, even at 12. My son <laughs> I want to know how you feel you can effectively show both sides of the fence to a child um, who's going through adolescence, whether it's when you decide that you're gay and you're going to tell you them, and if that's possible and how you go about that. Well, I told my children as they were entering adolescence, and uh, both of my children are heterosexual, and uh, I just told them who I was in terms of them having to uh, having any troubles about their their own sexual identity. My kids were, grew up in an atmosphere where they could talk about their sexuality, with there was no judgmental attitude on them, and they knew that I was going to be very supportive of their lifestyle or their sexual orientation, no matter where it was. And at the age of my, son, my daughter is 26 and my son is 24. I could, uh, was able to talk about anything to both of them. Yes. 
The gentleman that called before, the young 21-year-old yes. who said to, he didn't want to say to his wife and he really wanted to be married and right. he had a normal sexual life. Well, there are a lot of married people that go off <coughs> and enjoy men's games and go to football games and never see their wives socially. They might have a good sexual life, so why, why would he have to leave his wife and tell he was uh, homosexual? Would you want your daughter to live with her gay husband if he wanted to express his gayness outside the marriage? No, I wouldn't want my daughter involved in that. Well, but I'm saying he seems to have a problem uh, because of the way he was brought up. Well, the problem the man is dealing with, you have to realize, is the guilt and the deception that he lives with day after day of knowing that his wife doesn't know, that she has no choice in the matter. So he, he's internalized this, and it's a conflict for him. He's got to live with this. That I would understand was horrible, yeah. to live with something like that. I really can have a lot of compassion for that. And we'll, I, be back in just, we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Thanks for waiting. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. And? I was just thinking that, you know, this is being treated as this is a normal situation. This is abnormal. This fe me, female and male, women or men, these people should be called what, Will you tell me what is normal? Gay. What? What should we do with these abnormal they people? They need psychiatric help. They need help because this is abnormal. To, you're either a man or a woman. Do you want to know about I mean, this psychiatric is like help? This is like back in the Roman days. This is not normal Listen, behavior. Lady. I feel very... If my mother told me she was a, a lesbian... All these people need, need is Jesus... Hold it, hold it, hold it. What? Uh, All yeah. these people need is Jesus Christ. And if you get out on your face and pray to Jesus... As a Jew, get... I really don't feel that th there's any feel... place for... Oh, Let me, let me try and get some more folks on here. No, no, you just wait just one second, all right? All right. Jesus would not approve of your demanding nature. Yes, yes, yes. I told my mother four years ago that I was gay. I was in school at the time. And um, I've only had two sexual encounters in that time. Yeah, I am scared of AIDS. That's probably the reason. And I'm looking for a long-lasting relationship, not one-night stands. And I don't think God is going to help me change my ways because I went to my church, I'm Catholic, and my priest told me that go with my feelings, and I have. I would just like to say that uh, I, for one, am a gay Christian. A I'm a member of Riverside Church, and uh, Riverside Church is, is one church with about 3,000 members here in New York City that is very accepting of gay people, and, and I, I, I thank God for Riverside Church because it's a place where my lover and my son and I can go together as a family and have support from other straight people as well as, as, well as gay people, uh, and I am a Christian, and, and God is real to me, and I tried for 32 years to be something that God didn't want me to be. That I was trying to do what other people said I should do, not what God said I should do. Uh, I have a question for the panel. When you came out of the closet, did your coworkers and the rest of your family members and your neighbors treat you any differently? Have I got fired from a job once. once. Pardon me? You got what? I got fired from a job. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how did you feel about this? Did you feel resentful towards them? Resentful isn't the word. <laughs> I would like to. I yeah, would like excuse to me, but the is lady. this young man Go. here? Excuse me, just if you'll be seated for a You're here accidentally. You didn't know that today was. <clears throat> uh, you must feel good about uh, coming, having accepted your own uh, sexual status without. Uh... It. I was an alcoholic. I drank for since I was 16. Because of the pain of you, of of uh, the shame that you felt about yourself. Yes, I um drank day and night. My mother was very worried, and I ended up in the hospital. How, what's your relationship now with your folks? My father's dead, and um, my mother cried for about two months. <laughs> yeah. And now she accepts me, and that's all that I ask for, is my mother and my, my sister. That's it. I don't care what yeah. other people think. Uh, how do you explain this? Uh, how do you explain this societal attitude toward... When I was in school, they used to call me fag and stuff like that, but it, it's the parents. It really is. It, 
because I see people in my in the front. I live in an apartment, and they scream out "fag" and stuff like that. And their kids pick this up. Yes, they do. And little kindergartners are coming up, and they say you're queer and stuff like that. That's not right to teach your kid. No. Not right at all. You know, and Phil. We we know Phil. We see so many kids at the institute who have been called fags and are beaded up in their classrooms, and are are emotionally and physically abused by their peers, by teachers. I mean, that was one of the reasons that we had to create the Harvey Milk School, so the kids would have a safe place to go to. And for the um, kids who don't come out, think of the loneliness and the torment, the inner torment, to sit there in the middle of society where people are calling yes. fag and queer and, and all of those name terrible of names, love. and to feel awful about yourself because of that. Yeah, yeah. We are in New York City, and we'll be back in a moment. Question concerning children. Yes. Where do they go for a quote unquote normal role model? Or do we need role models anymore? We are normal role, role models. models. That's what right. is a normal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think what's I so think important is I to have people who love one another as role models. And 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 as I said, I appreciate Riverside Church in my instance yeah. because it's it's a, an opportunity where we can go and we don't have to segregate ourselves only with gay people in order to be physically safe, which oh. is is the case in a large part of the I would the like to ask the panel what suggestions you have to build tolerance towards differences. What do, you, do you have any ideas? If I did, I would publish a book. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd be yourself. sitting over there. Yeah. Be well, yourself and show your children that it's safe for them to be themselves. Right. Be able to ret to to um, Bring up celebrate to difference these. too. That's the other thing. Is that yeah. we're not a society that is tolerance of difference. We'd like to know back here if any of the panelists ever thought before going into childbirth and child rearing whether or not your relationship would have any effect on your child before they were born. Something Did they think about it before the baby was born? I, have not, I don't have any children, but I, I do work with lots of men and women who are married and, and where the husband's bisexual. And yes, a lot of thought goes into it. Yes. Uh, knowing what you went through trying to be accepted by society, if your child came to you and said that, you know, they were going gay or lesbian, would you try and talk them out of it and seek help for them? Or would Absolutely you not. Them? No I try to help them, help them be who they are and not pretend to be somebody that they can never be. Yes. I was wondering, didn't you people think that maybe you were selfish in the beginning? I mean, you're talking about all the socialization in the 50s and the 80s. There's plenty of old people who are gay who never felt the pressure to involve an innocent person in a marriage and innocent children in a relationship such as this. My no, son is suffering. I mean, I don't know where you came off with that statement, but first of all, it's wrong. It's wrong. And it's not a choice. I mean, there's been a lot of, of in the questions here, there's been a you lot of assumption. You decide whether you're gay or straight? Assumption that sexual orientation is sexual behavior. I mean, there, I know I'm I never, I personally never had a, a homosexual experience until I was 32 years old. That doesn't, and I've had plenty of heterosexual. That doesn't mean I was a heterosexual. I've always been a homosexual. It goes much deeper than behavior. Yes, ma'am. Over here, please. Well, um, as a teenager, I just think it would be very hard to tell a young children or to try to explain to them about being homosexual and having them understand it. I can understand them accepting it, but I'm 18 years old and I feel that right now I could probably understand it and deal with it better being older. Because when you go through your teens, you have to deal with so many more other problems like peer pressure. I told my children because if I didn't, somebody else would have, and they wouldn't have explained it to the, them in the way that I would have wanted. They would have said, your mother's a queer. That's how they would have said it. Are you there? I'm glad you waited. Go ahead. Yes. I'm the daughter of a gay father and a mother who claims that she didn't know about his sexuality at the time. She was very bitter about this, and since my father hid his sexuality from me, I had the benefit of neither their honesty or understanding in dealing with my own sexuality. And yet, even with these and society's pressures not to be gay, I still came out as a lesbian. You can't change someone's sexuality just as you can't change a personality. What you can do is right. modify its expression, and, and that can have bad consequences. And speaking to the lady who said something about psychotherapy before, you can't therapy it out. Ray went for therapy, for behavior therapy, where he got electric shocks 
whenever he had gay fantasies, when he drank Ipecac syrup to make himself vomit for gay fantasies. It doesn't work. You are who you are, and the answer is to accept who you are and be happy for yeah. it. What, when, how were you raised? You sound very, very enlightened, and I guess we should not be surprised since you've lived this. Uh, the, uh, the, you love your husband, and you accepted uh, with shock his announcement that he was gay, and you nursed him up. Uh, to the I'm end, he died of AIDS for those who joined us later. And this audience was very moved by your uh, commitment to your relationship. How did you get so tolerant? I was one of so the tolerant? people who helped him. Huh? I was just one of the people who right. helped him. His lover was there as right. well. But how were you raised and how were your attitudes changed? I assume you were exposed to homophobia as a child, were you not? No, my parents were not homophobic. Well, in a way, because I thought that it was a neurosis. Yeah, my parents were homophobic, and I was too. Um, I, I thought it was a neurosis, and it was a, an enlightening, consciousness-raising process to go through this. Yeah. Are you there? Hi. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, Phil. Uh, you know, this doesn't have to be tragic. You know, it could be worked out. Um, I have so, a lover. We're together like 13 years. Uh, my uh, lover is divorced, two kids. Uh, they're now 19 and uh, 20. And uh, his uh, ex-wife works for me. I own a business. I have a beauty shop. She works for me. She's my receptionist. We're very happy together. We're really terrific. Yeah. Well, uh, they're glad you made that point. Yes, ma'am. Hi. I just want to say... I, just I mean, it is true. It doesn't mean that everybody has to... Believe it or not, some of us out there can uh, bob and weave and adapt to this. Yes. It just seems to me that uh, the point is that possibly more harm could be done by staying in a marriage like this possibly than getting possible. the truth out one way or the other. Yeah, possible. Um, it let was me, for me. Huh? It was for me. You know, to get out of the marriage, because to staying in that marriage, at one point I contemplated suicide. I mean, I just couldn't stay in that marriage and pretend to be something I wasn't. And we'll be back in just a moment. Are you surprised at the response to this audience? You don't have a whole lot of support out here, if I might make an observation. And that, uh... Still think they're queers, huh? I think if all gay and lesbian people would suddenly turn purple, we wouldn't have a problem here. Part really? of the difficulty is, is that we are so invisible, and we can hide. And that puts a tremendous burden on people who are in the closet, who know who they are, but are desperately, for their life's sake, trying to keep it a secret. And by calling us queer, you're sort of perpetuating this violence against us, sir. Yeah. All I wanted to say, all I wanted to say yeah, is that are. years ago, I found out that my brother was gay. And I didn't know what it meant. You know? No, I really didn't, because I was younger at the time. And we sat down and we talked about it, but at first, I shut him off. I mean, I was mad, I was hurt, I was angry. And my opinion is, you know, I don't go for it or condone it or whatever, either way, but I'm saying nobody knows what they're going to do unless somebody in their family or someone you love is gay, because it's so easy to, you know, you just can't, yeah. you just don't know what I you're going to do. I, yeah. Isn't that part of the fear? Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The fear. I just wanted to say that I just, that this is my belief, my own belief that, I just don't, I think that's the reason why AIDS is going around so bad because I, that's the reason why, that, you know, it's not right. It's wrong, and is I God, did God do this? And I have two kids that I'm trying to raise, and I don't think it's right. Do you say I the just, same thing about sickle cell anemia? Yeah. I have the great... Well... It's not true in either case. Yes. I have great compassion for the people up there, and I don't believe whether it's right or wrong, but what I do resent is them telling them me that their behavior is normal because I don't feel... Why like do you right. resent that? And who decides normal and abnormal? How do you have well, the right to decide Well, this is my your... feelings and not my neighbors or anybody else's. I'm saying that normal is a man and wife together, not two women or two men. Well, that's yes, your viewpoint. Hold Thank it. you for sharing. That's I not how we feel. I have a question about if... How it... do you feel about this? Well, I'm not happy with it. I'm uncomfortable with it. And my question is, if this turns out to be a genetic defect or something that you can get like the measles, would any of you take the cure? No. no. The cure. Get it? If it's I don't need to, to be, be cured. Well, if it's something that is physically uh, debilitating that you can get over, would you take the cure? Get over. You want to get over. I've, I've, learned, to get over. I've learned that there's a great blessing in being the person God made me to be. All right. I <laughs> yeah. Briefly. Yeah. Briefly. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, briefly? Yeah. All I could say is if they ever did come up with a cure with it, they'd have to chase me around the world with that needle. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to, I can't be that brief, except that I do have children I have not told yet that I am gay. I was married for seven years. I've been divorced for five. How, what words did you use? They're 11 years old and one is eight. I just, How do I say it? What I, I said to my kid was that I love, I think I did what Sandy did. I just said that I love, you know, that I'm gay and that means that I love somebody of the same sex, that I love other women. That's just how I said it. Them. Just It'll say be it. much better. Just yeah. tell them. Yeah. Before somebody You'll else. Find yeah. the well, they're going to know now, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to. You're divorced? Yes. We'll be back in just a moment. say people should accept people for what they are there wouldn't be suicide drug addiction alcoholism these things are created because people don't accept people for who they are <laughs> I, want, hey, I just want to add that what would, you, what would you have done if your children had not accepted you being gay it would have been very painful for me but at the same time i have to recognize that my son is an individual too Over and here. he may still reject me because it's a gradual process. Services provided and promotional fees he paid by the following. He doesn't want to see me. And when it comes to thinking of new ways to... I find that hard to believe that 